Testing. Testing one, two. Okay, so we're going to bow in. Ready? Face this way. Hup. Two, three. Okay, salute. <clears throat> so this is our first class after the big ten pandemic. So we, it hasn't been, um, you know, as, as big as we thought. Well, I didn't think it was going to be big anyways, but you know, we had about seven, eight people this morning. And then we, you know, last class. So this is a pretty good turnout tonight. Uh, Lawrence, I think, is still coming. So, so where do you want to start from? You want to? We we've already gone through all the other forms. You want to go through uh, first, second, third, fourth form? You want to do that again? Okay. So, all right. So we we'll start off. Ready? Do we have the mirrors? Let's do more fakun. All right. Oh, you want to do some warmers after this? Okay. Ready? One, two, three. One, two. Then pivot. High, low, dragon, step back, chun kill, scoop, uppercut, remove, punch, squat down, uppercut, remove, punch, suspended, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, uppercut, sliding step, change, okay, down, elbow up, change directions, cutting hand, palm, remove, punch, step to the back, elbow, back fist, palm, high block, crescent kick, trap, back fist, remove, punch, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Okay, deep breathing, inhale. Okay, we'll go to second form. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three, four, one, two, three. Mind you take a temperature. Ready? Change directions. Sliding step. Punch. Diagonal strike. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. Sliding step. Punch. Elbow. Strike down. Back fist. Change directions. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, scoop, press, kick, jump back. One, two, three, twist, kick, Phoenix. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 
One, two. Close. Okay, deep breathing. So let's work, review the back fist and also the cross hand position. So a back, all the back fist, your qua, right, should first, after you trap, you come to here and then you have to have, because every movement has a, a action in every framework of the space, right? So if I'm here and I turn to here, the first thing you have to do is get this position. And then as it goes up and down, you turn, and then you settle into it. You see what I mean? So this movement, because we're here, right? We're trapped. We're here. This movement comes up. So when it comes up, the elbow is here. You have to drop the elbow to here and then turn your body. So you know, between here, here, and here, you have to phase that in because by the time your fist gets to here, it has to be coming downward. It has to synchronize with the forward knee that's sinking, right? Because the power of this isn't much power if you're just going to do that. So you have to sink here and here. So this has that relationship. So the quattro is always has to have that relationship. So it has to come because... The movement is circular. The downside of that circle arc is on this side. So that arc and this elbow has to have the same uh, profile. So that's why when we're doing the movement, whether it's like this or it's like this, it has the same action. When you're here, that is the same action. You're not coming through here. You're coming from here. But this, this action right here is learned here. So there's a consistency in the same motion, just that this is two of them, this is one. So that's important because the timing there has to be there. So you actually have to take it a little bit higher and, and, and let it drop. Yeah. But let it go. Don't see, the, see, a back fist is the back of the hand. Now, if I go like this, watch this then actually that looks like it's projecting forward, like this, right? So if I go like this, so do you see it, it, it stopped. This is down. So you have a covering in the action. It takes, so when it covers, what makes it come down? Sink that, sink. Yeah, see what I mean? So it, it's okay to come up like this, and do this because this is a transition. If you go like this and go like this, then it becomes a strength, a double strength action. If I go like this, that's my setup. That's the execution of that. So there's a passive action there. So we have to define those two actions so that it's, there's balance. You know, the whole, everything we do has to be balanced. Yeah, yeah. But don't let it go. You have to be firm. But Solid, yeah. So the strength comes, it's, it's moving in space. It's a constant energy in the movement, yeah. So, right, yeah. So it's soft, turn, down, yeah. So the, so the emphasize, emphasis is not all here. It's, it's here, and then here, and then down. The focus in, is in the down direction. Yeah. So you know, try that. Okay. Great. Get your elbow. Yeah. Now do the single one. Yeah. Now while while watch this now while you while we're like this one, two that's almost simultaneous right? But when you tune one, two, actually, this is actually one, two. So this. It's like two separate actions, but yet they're tied together. The effectiveness of the movement is more effective if they're not just going together. It's because it's, you're here. One, two, three. Now this is another action. 
depending on how. So that's a little bit more sophisticated than what's going on here and what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Yeah. So there's dimensional changes if you can see them. You see the dimensional changes? One, two, three, four. So there's dimensional. This is one, this is one, this is one. So all of those uh, varying positions. That's, that's harder to capture, but it's something that has to happen. Yeah. So the other one is the crosshand. Right? So after you push here, you're like this. Right? So you, you have to finish the movement to here. So this is one. Step one, now turn the body. This goes straight. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, one. Yeah, you can step back a little. Yeah. See, every time you step back, the guy behind you is going to step back too. Called social distancing. Yeah. So, okay, go ahead, do it again. Ready? Hop. So, so upper lower coordination, right? Upper lower coordination. We talk about a lot about it in Tai Chi, but when we're here, when you step forward, where's the sink, right? In the stance, right? So when you're here, the, this and this have to go together. This have to go together. So if the stance, yeah, go one, two, yeah. So that's that's the the body form we're trying to capture. That's the imagery. The body form is the functional side of the movement. So you know there's there is an end point where you focus and all the power goes to that point. But the transition between the legs and the hands and the body and the upper body and the twist become yeah one. Two, yeah. Now the other one where we have, I think, a little trouble with when we're here. When we step back, we have to shift, step, and then this. So what? So here, watch the transition. Right, you're here. Right, you're here. When I shift, this just has to do this. Right, because. Let the, let the elbow go up. Let the elbow go up. Right. When the elbow goes up, what do, you, what do you get when your elbow goes up? It becomes pivotal. If you don't let the elbow go up, right, and you go like this and you're pressing, then actually this is dead. When you go like this, then you have pivotal action. The thing that I talk about, right? Pivot on the point. That way you don't actually... Uh, con have conflict or fight the the uh, the point that you're applying your force because it's going like this. Now when I'm here, elbows out. Elbow has to come down to do that. If you leave your elbow up, then that looks stiff, doesn't it? Does this look stiff? Dead, right? That's dead strength. Well, well, because you're here, this, this you have to drop it. But then when you capture, then your body has to do this. So then you have to adjust your, you have to adjust your body form for that. So those are the things that really, uh, in the, for like newer people can't control the body for one thing. The newer people can't pick up on those subtleties. So you have to try to build that into your movement. Because once you have, that's the, that's the same movement that you have in full hawk, just that you're up here. So it's really the second, the secondary hand adjustment. If you don't adjust that movement, then the, the body form's not gonna be correct. So when we're here, here, your hand goes like that. These should not be the same height. If it's the same height, you're not gonna get any power on this side because you, there's something going on here. So try it, yeah, all right, try it. Get, get that movement from there, yeah, one, two, yeah, but see this side. You have to, yeah, 
Your elbow should lower. Drop your elbow. See, because your elbow's, yeah, because your elbow is up, your shoulder's up. So when you go like this, then you're like this, you're distorted. So see, look at my arm, watch my arm, right? If I drop my shoulder, the hand shapes would be almost the same. But the thing is, you have to maneuver the correct joint. So you have, you know, you have 12 major joints. If you don't manipulate the correct joint, you're going to be out of position. You're sinking the elbow here. So the closing shoulder happens secondary. That becomes passive action. You know, the closing and opening of that becomes the next phase of that. So when I'm here, then it sink the elbow, relax the shoulder again. So you sink the elbow, but then, you, yeah, like that. See, that, those are, you know, yeah. Yeah, so you have to relax this. Go, yeah. Relax this, yeah. Yeah, so you have plenty of power here, but the structure on this side is not. So because your hand is like this, you have to, yeah. And, but not so, not so much. Yeah, like, not like this. Yeah, yeah, like that. But then... Okay, now chop. Yeah. So see this? It's open, right? Is there a hole? There's a hole. So should the elbow be higher or? No. This? Your body should turn more this way. Turn here. Ah, right. No, because you're turning like that and because this is rigid, yeah. you have nothing going on there. Watch this. No, face us, face us, face. Okay, slow, slow, slow. No, do one at a time. First phase, open, right? Close. You see how it closed? Uh, it's not not getting hit there. What it is is it's creating a structural integrity of this arm. It can't happen if you're like this because your body is rigid there. Now you have you no know, clothes like this. Well, it, it does because if you're capturing an arm, if you're, whole, if you're here, if you don't do this, okay. but it doesn't do that because... You're doing this. You're doing that because you're turning, and it, it. So that's why your body has to open and close, expand and contract. So actually, you can shorten it a little bit, because if you were to hold, if you were to hold, it would be like this. Oh, so it should be shortened. Okay. So yeah. I was doing it more like the. Yeah, because line. because right. the principle of capturing something, you can't actually get anything out here. You have no leverage. So most of the movements that you're going to use has to be closer to your body. Anytime you pull something, it has to be close to the body. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like that. You see? Okay, where's the alcohol? Yeah, yeah but still relax. Yeah. <laughs> He's breaking yeah. up the alcohol already. <laughs> you, you feel that? You feel, come for a little. You feel that? Yeah. You feel that position versus where you're way back here. And you're like this. You see this? Yeah. And this. Yeah. You, see the, you see the body form between this and this. Just. You understand your position really, that, that, that's, that's, those are the positions that we're struggling with. So that's what it is. So. I should have put the corral over there. It's angular. It's angular because you're hitting the clavicle area or you're hitting across. Yeah. 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 Just. But don't forget the other arm. Oh, no. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> You're still there. <laughs> so this is it has to be closed and closed. Dropping the elbow more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's better. So so a lot of it has to do with your twist the, of the back. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about when your the back is doesn't turn. It doesn't have that alignment. 
It's called twisting your back. Twist your back. New yo. Right? If you don't turn your back, look. Right? When you, as soon as you add your back into it, then you have the mo motion. Yeah. So the only way to actually get it is to, to do it over and over again. One, two. One, two. Right? One, two. We do it in a mirror. We're here. One, two. If we're here, one, two, three. See? So, yeah. That's it. Turn, drop the soda. Yeah. And then twist more. Here. Get, get your, this over to here. But by turning your body. Yeah. Yeah. You can move away from the pole. That, that guy is, we, have, we forgot to clean that pole. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you can see, you can see like even here, right? If I go like this, one, and I don't turn my, my body completely, it doesn't create the correct posture. So you have to move into your positions and get total body uh, involvement. Yeah. But don't let it go too far vertical. Keep the angle. Because why? Because this opening has to be capturing the forearm or the elbow. So it can't be to this or to this. Because this, your elbow's in, you, you're going to be in a different place. Yeah. So here, just... But when I grab his here, I have to pull like this. See, so this, see how that, that opening and this aligns. Yeah. So anyways, so that's just something you have to work on. And then, so we had those, those few things. It's the back fist. This. So when you're here, horse stance down, lifting, and then settle in. Horse stands down and settle. So you, you engage your back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's go to uh, third form. Third form. So the review of third form, we're just sequentially we're here, right? Here. Bend. One. Two. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. There's your back fist again. Remember, you have to get your body into that, right? Turn, thrust, pull. So that thrust, make sure you, that thrust, make sure you put your hand, you're here, claw, right? So just come to center and then thrust from here. Pull. High. One, two. Yeah. So minor, come up there. Yeah. Then hop. One, two, three. Lunge. Okay. Step through. Punch. Oh, catch. This is catching the elbow. So when you catch the elbow, what should you do? Yeah. Let it slide. Because actually, when your hand is like this and you punch through, you're getting a, a sense of capturing. So your hand actually goes this. But your hand actually would be doing this if you're using it, just like that. Right? And then you go one, uppercut. Okay, relax, sink, hop. One, two, three, lunge. Step forward. Okay, grab. Okay, elbow, shorten the elbows, Rob. Shorten the elbows. Yeah. When you pull any of these poles, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go over those later. Okay, go. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, 
two, three, four, one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, 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 five. Okay, so when you pull, you want your elbows to be close to here. You know, you don't want to pull here. So the same thing, this is like here, right? So out here, you, know, you have to turn, your, it's you're wrapping your body like this. So when you're here, this is the same, this is the same. So you lead, sink here, and then pull here. Thrust, sink here, and pull here. So the first movement has to be sink. So you're not sinking. Yeah. Okay, do it, right? Sink, okay. See, it's movements of two planes. You have one plane here, you have one plane here. But you can't get from here to here without passing through here, right? So if you can't pass, if you don't pass through here, this is your sinking, right? Sink. This is your twist. And this is your subtle. So you, so you should practice the movements in three phases so you're missing one minute there. Okay. See, So you break it down. One, two, three. The reason for that, okay, the, the, the reason for that, see Rob, extend your arm. Just extend your arm in a fist. Like, yeah. See, this is strong, right? Weak, right? So this, if he just tries to pull, he can't. Well, I just try to pull. I can't because it's even. But when I go like this, <laughs> it changes the direction of his force because I disrupted. Because while his force is here, right? See? Yeah. One, two. Because you have to go in a direction after you, yeah. So now you see the, why the hand has to do, like, do that. You have to meet the, so it's really like this. And then you're like this. So as soon as you pull down, then you come back. That's the action. But when you do it, okay, do that again. Right? Now finish the second movement. One, two. So he, you have to turn oh, more, more. Yeah. And that elbow should be down. Yeah. So that's the structure. Everything is a, a structure from transition to final, transition to final. This is what we have to improve on. Those are the little, you know, things that, are overlooked because the body doesn't understand it. So when you go through this process, really it's really relearning things to understand the, the body mechanics of that. Now we know what, you know, like everything that we talk about, you can understand it here. But the body doesn't recognize what you're trying to, to do. So that's a side of learning that has to be uh, interpreted from the body. Okay, so right there, right? Okay, do it again. I'll just point out something. Go. Okay, so this elbow's out. Should be in. Yeah. So when you're pulling like this, then you really don't have anything there. It has to be here. Because why? Why does it have to be here? Why does it have to be here? Why? Because if I go like this and I turn more, if my hand is here, and I turn more, look at the hand's out of position. It has to be here in order for it to be. Because, because you, you look at it as turning in a circle. It's like you're standing in a cylinder. So you do brush knee, the hand is like this. When you do full hawk, the hand is like this. So that arc that you trace has to abide by that position. Otherwise... 
and it ends up like this, and then you say, well, where's the strength? It's as soon as you sink your elbow. So sink your elbow, relax the shoulder. It comes down to that. As simple as that is, it's, unless you put it into sort of uh, something that's tangible, your body doesn't recognize it. So to reach a level of uh, movement where you don't need to go into the tangible state sort of, is a very sophisticated level of, of understanding because the body really knows it. But meanwhile, when I explain it to you, it's very clear to you that that's what you're trying to do. So the process over time, yeah, so that's better. The process over time is something that you have to, your body will sort it all out. So old school, really, they never really pointed those things out to you. You have to kind of go through it and go through it and go through it. So in a sense, I've already gone through that, so I can let you know that that's what I see. So that's how I can make that correction. It's something that, you know, after you've gone through that process and you understand it, you can see it in your student or whoever you're teaching. Otherwise, you can't really see it, so it's hard for you to make a difference. So that's really a skill level. You know, I mean, everyone that has a certain expertise in whatever they do can see a mistake and they can point out right away from an experience. But if you've never been there, how do you know how to correct that? Because even you don't understand, you know, you don't. So this is um, what we need to you know, get, get a better understanding, a better grasp of it. So, so that, those are really somewhat pretty simple things, right? You go like this, sink the elbow, turn. But when you turn, how much you turn? You have to turn. You have to turn to your your nose, your knee, and that position is balance. You can't, yeah. So, yeah. So that's why the lower back has to really relax. So drop the elbow a little bit on that side. Yeah. Yeah. That's the position that you do your butterflies, right? Oh, it's off. Because the physical side of the movement really is just physical. The intrinsic side of the position is something that becomes innate when you're here. Right? This position, right? that position. If I fl it's like that. When I flip it, you see. So that's something that you've determined from. That's like that. And then if I reverse it back. It's that same line that really wrapped your body. So, so you know, this is uh, understanding the structure. Yeah, the comfortable position is what we call the natural position. It's called it's called dung yin or let hawk. Let hawk is structure. Dung yin is natural. Dung yin let hawk is that. That's what. So in Yedahimon, the whole uh, process of doing it means doing it is comfortable, natural, led hoc is structure. So they say this is the, you know, and, and what we practice is always looking for the naturalness of the, of the use of it and, the, and the, the structure. So what is your structure? Your structure is your skeleton. We have to work, work with our skeleton. And what we have to deal, deal with is work with our skeleton, which is, a little bit different from a physical thing. It's, you know, even though, you know, on a, you know, a very physical side, it's just, you know, bones. But how do we move those bones so that it has functionality or effectiveness, right? So, you know, you could take one of those bones, like the old cavemen used to do, get a brontosaurus shin bone and kind of clobber you with it, right? But we're dealing with our structure, and we manipulate it. And how do we manipulate it? We manipulate it by what the brain tells it to do as a sequence of events through a motor skill. And a motor skill is controlling you know, the, the synapses and so forth that are involved with that programming of that action. And that's all wired into your system based on what you've trained it to do. So the brain, brain plasticity that your brain goes through is trying to figure out what you're feeding at this information. And eventually your body will pick up on it and it learns not to use strength that shouldn't be used. That's 
deleting the excessiveness. So it's a process, but it's really, um, you know, something you have to go through to get really understand it. So the mantis, we have different, you know, like it can be stiff like that, right? But we, if you want agility of the movement, you have your, really everything is kind of figure eights, right? So if we're like this, if I'm like this, I cross and I go like this and I go like this. That's one way of getting into the mantis. When you're here. So that's multi-dimensional movement because you have one here, you have one here, you have one there, and you have one here. You have X, Y, E axis moving, but what's it's easy to do the hands, right? We just go, but the thing is, what about the body? The body movement has to be compatible with the motion so that you have the angular positions of your torso. So if your torso movement isn't compatible with the movement, then whether it's turning right to left or forward and back or up and down, all of those dimensions have to tie together. Because every piece of your arm and every piece of your torso has to synchronize. So that gets to be pretty complicated. So now it's no longer Now it's so every action has something that has to tie together. That's the upper lower coordination. You have to build that understanding into the body so you have that that yin, that side. Yeah. So there, that's there, but you have to have this sink the elbow, relax the shoulder. Now the, the energy of the movement ties into where the hands are going. If this is going this way, if this is going this way, and this is going this way, those are all different parts of the the bridge that has to be, you know, using it as a as a feeling. So that's what body form is. That's what that's what my what makes sort of kung fu different from a lot of other things. Especially, you know, higher level skill is really that. So the term kung fu really means work and skill, or work becomes skill. So without the work, there can, can't be any skill. And, you know, so that's what... Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah because, because the core, the, what comes from your center is the, the part that it leads from. Yeah. You have your, your vertical spine. You know, I, I've been talking about this in Tai Chi, the vertical spine is really important and where it moves is off the back heel. So it's like that in Yehimon, it's like that in your mantis when we're here. Now my spine is here. If I turn like this, it's still there, but that position and this position and this position are, are, are different directions. So the big part is your torso. The strength comes from the legs, and it's manifested in the hands, and then all the way to the fingertips. So, the, so these are just feelers. You're just using those as a feeler, and once you feel, then the power comes from your legs. Yeah. So the less strength you have in your arm, the more sensitivity it has. You know, if you were to sort of you know, pat, patting a baby's head, would you do it like this? Or you would be soft, right? And you would feel, right? Because you have more sensitivity, because you have more nerves coming to a head over here. Whereas if you're like this, it becomes stiff and rigid. So you don't have much sensitivity when it's rigid. Yeah. When you're like this, just sinking the elbow allows you to have that sensitivity that comes into the arm. When you relax the body, you have sensitivity and the rest of it. So, so every section of your body has to adapt and become more and more uh, sensitive because it becomes pliable. You know, when you're pliable, like you're kneading dough, how do you know what it feels like? You have to knead. So pushing hands or any of these, they used to call it kneading hands, or, or pushing hands is a name they've talked about, kneading hands. Like, 
like dough. You're moving and you're adapting to what it feels like and how much um, elasticity is, how much resistance there is. So, you know, people that bake or even if they make pizza, they act, the master, the seafood that makes pizza, knows how elastic that is by the way it feels and how it gives. So that's the pastry maker has all those sensitivities. Whereas, you know, you give it to us, we have sensitivity here, but really don't know what that is. But if you if you were taught, then you would know what it was. But if you're totally rigid and you throw the pizza up and it's, you self-absorb it and then go again and throw it up, the rookie puts holes in it, right? You've seen the guys throwing pizza way up, high and come down. Yeah. No. <laughs> Actually, actually, the, the pizza place in Boston there, when he used to throw them up, there were like these uh, sprinkler things up there. There's so many skins up there that got caught, you know, they go whoosh, didn't come down. Not till the next day it comes down, then it goes into the, the first pizza they made. <laughs> no, anyways. Um, so that's Bangbukun, and okay. So any questions on that? How about the sweet? So, yeah. So this is called a hook foot, a hook, cow. Right. So when you sweep, you should stay as close to the ground as possible. It has so, so you know when you go airborne, it does take more time. That's the reason why, and you have more. So this has to go opposite. This going opposite. Okay, let's, so the, the hand movement actually needs a little dexterity or like you have to close the center. You know what closing the center means? Closing the center. Okay, just just looking. Okay, let's let's everybody do it once or a couple times. Okay, Quint, Kim, do do the just the, do the hand movement. Yeah. Okay, good. Ready? Uh, do it facing us though. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sunny. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Bob. Mana? Okay. So, so, okay. So, so you see a difference, right? So what? So, so, so what's the most important part of that? It's your bridge, right? So what's the bridge? It's this, right? This is your bridge, right? This is reverse the ball, right? So between this and this and this is the exchange. What is it? Lawrence, what is it? Vertical to horizontal. So what you're doing is this. Because both hands are parallel and they're moving like this. But what you need to do is fill the, fill the center. Now watch the hand. Watch this. So it has to go like this, because you need this to intercept, and you need this to cover. So the two hands are ca capturing in between. Right, so you need to do that. Right, right. so now everybody actually, so now you, you know the circle, reversing the ball, right? It's just this. So essentially you're just doing this, it's just flipping over. So everybody should do this as a, as a, a bit of a practice, you should do this, right? 
Now, when you flip the hands in this, so okay. So, what's a multi-dimensional movement? It goes into different planes, has different actions. It has right, left, forward, and back, drawing back and forth. Okay. So, watch this. This has to do that. This has to fold, flip, goes out, and then it pulls back. But you're not pulling back, you're turning and you're twisting. So the twisting and turning and what's created by the big part of your body is what creates the, the functional side of those movements. So you see, your torso movement is very important because so you have, you know, Siung An Sin Yoma, right? Siung An Sin Siu, Hien, Gan, Yin, Yo, right? Yo is your body. Your body form is what you have to have the body method. So you have Sin Fat, then you have Bu Fat. So Sin Fat, how it moves, how it moves as it separates. So combine and separate, open and close. All the principles that we have in both Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and even Yehi Mo, every everything has that same principle. You have to kind of understand and capture that term in your head. And, you know, you learn through the audio uh, side of it was a principle, and you have to house that because that constantly becomes something that will echo in your head, and you have to come back to understand what that means. So those are the kind of things that stay in your brain when you hear it 20 years down the way. You say, oh, so then when, you reflect, when you're doing a movement, you reflect on that memory that you just captured as a, a theory. Yeah. So you have to develop that one, the patterns, because your body over time picks up so many patterns. The longer you practice and the more you've picked up these patterns, the more individually individualized it's on, on the different sides of your body. So the easiest thing to do is when movements are in tandem. This is the easiest thing to do. But when you change, when there's multi-dimensional movements happening and you have to do these different actions, your body doesn't recognize how to do that. So that's what, that's what we're trying to develop as a skill. So is there any value to that other than doing the praying mantis suite? There's a tremendous value to the brain plasticity and the, the neural part of it and the motor skill side of it that the average person doesn't have. So that has to be a big benefit. You know, it doesn't take a, you know, uh, a genius to figure out that someone that moves more efficiently has a different wiring and has a different, uh, you know, complexity to what goes on in here. So someone that studies five years and someone that studies 30 years, if they went through the right process, is definitely going to be different. So that's really what happens. Yeah. Yeah, because, because, yeah, yeah. Because your, bo your body, so that's, that's what happens when your body becomes proprioceptively aware based on the, the concept of this proprioception. Because we know our body in space. But, we, but you know how much of the space that we really need to know? Just this. That's all you have to know. Because everywhere you go, it's the same piece of your body. That's what the reference point is. When we reference our body, that's what we mean. And everyone is unique because we're different sizes. Our limbs are different. And what it makes it unique is the transition side of it because we're wired differently. But eventually that w the wiring becomes similar because or at least the program gets similar because now you kind of open up you know, that side of the, the wiring, the, the synapses. So you have fold, yeah. So that's what we have to do, just like what, what he's doing. You just go over and over, and then once you get that coordination, then you start to bring in directional. Then you change the timing based on what the hands and legs should do. So that the only way to develop is, is to do it. They call specificity of training. You do this movement, and you get good at this movement. But 
what happens like and you have this movement in the fourth form similar but you're doing this the time so you can create the same motion essentially and then what you do is you change the grip you change the hand because your body is familiar with it so that's a cross reference it's cross referencing up here because you've identified it but if you learn this and then you learn another form it doesn't really cross reference until you really know that form so you have to know the fourth form you have to know because meanwhile you're thinking sequence what's the sequence how do I get through that once the sequence is embedded then you have to go to the next line that movement is the same movement that's the same action so the only action the only difference is the plane of movement right because a certain you know really when we deal with movements it's really a, a sphere it's a it's a cube it's a ball so when you can complete the circle in the sphere then you have volume and movement then the volume is what you control yeah that's it yeah so I mean that's that's just we just got to the third form so there's a lot of little things that we need to do right So one thing, and I just leave leave it at that. One thing, the hand movements are doing this, but if the body doesn't turn within the the space of the moon, whether it's right or left, the whole stays there. So if I'm doing this, even though I'm coming coming through here, it's not till I start to turn the body that you condense the the center line, that center. So the hole gets smaller as your body transitions. It's just like, like this, like this. There's a big hole here, right? Even a big hole. I go like this, and I bring. Now it's smaller because I, I moved it. So that's what you have to understand. That center moves. Yeah. And then when you're here, don't lift the shoulder, relax the shoulder, and sink. That's one of the things that the, the shoulder wants to always want to do that. So that's better, yeah. Okay, so while we, while we can spin the hands and do that, then you add one thing into it. You have to sink your elbow and relax the shoulder in the transition so sinking the elbow and relax the shoulder is what it's it's what it's gravity gravity use gravity so they call it the you know the, the, the universal force right gravity they call a hong gan ga let hawk. That's what the Gumla used to say. Hong gan ga let hawk is using a universal strength. So you don't use your own physical strength. You use that. But what that is, is you're channeling the movement without using the physical strength. You're just manipulating it. So then you, you conserve your energy. So, the, so there's balance. You move, but you sink, and you sink because you let go. So relaxing is let it, letting go. Letting go is releasing. So your body has to do that. So there's a lot of uh, things here, yeah. So, okay, so why don't you guys practice uh, um, fourth form now and run through it. Just run, so we'll run through the rest of the forms of sequence because there's a, you know, we can correct every single form. We'll just run through just for review and then each class we'll try to pick a form and work on the the nuances, and then we can kind of progress that way. All right, begin. Go.
across the engagement. That's on the mic. Come on, let's put the correct strength in it now. So it's all about learning how to use your strength.
Coco. Hmm. Finish, finish, finish the movements. Press, trap, sink, lift, hop, punch, pull, dragon, one, sweep, big, black tiger, dragon, turn, chuncho, punch, Punch, close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, deep breathing. Yeah, relax two seconds. <laughs> oh, fuck you, the man. Sorry, my glasses. But I'll do it. <laughs> okay, okay, relax two seconds, yeah. So finishing, it really means with the hips. Your hips have to finish this way. Because it doesn't complete because the hips and not cooperating with the upper body. So while the hand wants to hit the target, the hips don't finish. So it's the same thing as this. If you turn through your punch, you have to finish it to here so you have this alignment, the nose, the knee, and the fist. So that, that's basically, you know, when we're doing these and we're here, this has to go here, and then you have to finish. When you adjust, you wind it up, boom, boom, here, boom, boom. So you have to... Not only straighten this hip, relax this one, and get your body over that foot is the lower body. That's the sort of the leg method. Then the body form, you have to just turn, and you have to preset your position to let that happen. So that's really basic. It happens. If you do the five stances, we should probably, everyone should redo that at some point, the five stances. And the five stances, you have this, your sliding step. This is where you finish it. When you step through, this is where you finish it because the body's doing that. And then when you shift, you cross and you're here. Then you turn, you're in this position, you have that, your back is, then this. Get your position, step, and then let your hips sink into the stance. So the, all of that is getting your legs working like your arms. So legs are usually not as agile because they carry weight. And if you just carry weight and strengthen them, it's not going to have the agility that it needs. So the only way to develop the leg work is leg work. You can't do squats and run. You cha you're training muscles, but you're not programming the motor skill into your brain because motor skill is coordination. So it's completely different. You're using the same group of muscles, but they're used in a different way. There's, a functional, there's functionality to it. So that's what, you know, when you, we, we practice something, we're really programming movement in so that it begins to understand. So that's, it's, it's completely different from what people think as physical exercise. You, know, you could build all the biceps that you want, all the triceps you want, but can you do that? It doesn't tie together. Because you're doing it like this, and you're doing it like this, those are the groups of muscle using. But maybe that's good, pretty good for drunken fists, but you're doing something like this, the muscle, the timing, and the, what has to happen in that transition is completely different from what you're doing. So this kind of stuff, the twisting, the twisting, the stuff that we do in Yidhimon is completely different from anything because you have spiraling. And spiraling is not just doing this because they have these things that you do this to strengthen your forearm. But that's one dimension. When you're moving like this and like this is multi-dimensional movement. It's completely different from just doing this. You can do this and get tremendous forearms. 
but those forearms are useless because you don't use them. You're not, unless you're, you know, rolling, if you, you have to, you know, roll something like this, it's good for that. But when you have to do this, or you have to do this, or you have to do this, it's a different connection. So everything that we do is so unique. That's why, you know, a lot of people have trouble in the beginning. But once you understand the principle and the concept, then you have a kind of a, a way of learning and developing it. So we have a lot of different training tools to work with, which is you know, one of the things that makes our practice so unique. We have a set of exercises for every one of our styles and discipline. So, so there's a lot of those kind of things that we have to work on uh, you know, going forward because the body form really can't be developed without it. You know, you, because you know, old school, you practice 50, 60, 70 years, and then by the time you're 80 years old, you're really good you, because you went through the process and you just made all the discoveries. But no one wants to spend 80 years to discover something. You wanna, so we've I've actually advanced because as every you know, grandmaster or generation, they picked up something new in their, their journey as a discovery and they share that, but how openly they shared their discoveries, you know, is probably left to, you know, for you you to imagine that a lot of it was was not actually shared. And if they did share it, very few people that were able to have that opportunity might have not passed it to anybody else, because it's really hard to find a student that's going to spend a lifetime with you to try to to cultivate it, right? So that's why it's really something that's, you know, they used to say, you know, my teacher would say, you can count them on a hand now of, of the greats because they're going away. So, so, so that's how it is, you know. So you recovered? Recovered? Yeah, yeah. So Gungji for Fu you know, one of the things is when we use, when we lift and we push out, we want to use the strength that's using that strength in a direction. Then we go like this. When you pull in, don't let the hands come out like that. You should be like this. Let it keep it, yeah. You know. And then you bring it up, and then you push it out, and have the form. Down, out, sink, close, salute, turn, turn, snap. One, two, three. Let's do this fold. One, two, three. Yeah, and then go. And there, one. Open, two, three. Drive it from your waist. One. So pull. Open. Pull elbows way back. Push. Elbows way back. Push, but put some strength in the pullback. Go. Push. Push. Sink your elbow and pull. Push. Now the next one, elbow up. Grab. Sink your elbow and pull. Push. Elbow up. Grab. Push. Elbow up. Grab. Push. Elbow up. Let's do it again. Sink. Grab. Push. Wrist block. Pop. Thrust. Sink. Cross. Open. Cross. Cover. Open. One. Two. Three. Now next move. Straight line. One. 
wall the way. Don't cross behind. Straight. There should be one line. See, this foot should be here. Don't don't bring it around. Yeah, it has to be like drawing a straight. They call it like a one. The Chinese character for one is this right here. One. Yeah. Okay. And then kick. Make a kick your heel out. Get your stance. Spread both heels out. So when you yeah, good. You got to get your heels out and then go. That's the kind of thing that the muscles don't realize it's not doing it until you do it. Then when you feel that, you've got to get that as a habit. Go, middle. So here. All right. Pull in. Sink the elbow. And then bring back the vertical. Because if you're here, then you do this. It's out there. You have to bring it to here. Turn your waist and then open it back up. Huh? But don't overturn. It stays here. Once you're trapped, don't overturn. Huh? Then you pivot. One, two, three, four, high. Lift, drop. Step. Set up. Turn. Cut. Draw. Sink, if you can. Sliding step, pump, pop. Okay, elbow. Closer. Yeah. Don't elbow, but don't sink. Close, closer. Yeah. Turn. Yeah. See, because you because it, you're turning, you see you're turning. It's coming. It's tracking you yeah. much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go. One, two, three. Down. Okay. Oh. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Next one. Two, three. That's your straight. Remember, straight. Not. It's straight. Not turning. Yeah. Kick. Sweep. Go. Go. Okay. Go. Three, four, up, down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Middle. So if you can, after you step out, this is left out here. You shift and then turn into this position like this. So if you, if you were to take this position and close your fist, that's like fist on the elbow. See, you turn. You sink your elbow in your hands like this. Then you're here. Dragon. Yeah. One. Sink two, three, divert, dragon, adjust your back foot, turn, that's it. Get your elbows out a little bit like this. Now this elbow actually flays out, this, so that elbow's okay. So it doesn't stay here. You have to See, when you go like this and you keep it here, you have no lateral direction of movement. So the elbows have to flare out a little. Your wrist has to flex a little bit. Then you turn like this. Now the strength is here. In the hand, strength is in your hand. If you have it here and you turn, no matter how much strength you have, you feel not strong. Right? So you have to go like that. Your body has to lean into it. Yeah. So there you have to turn more. See, Because when you, when you were here, you are just enough. So when you turn, your, your offset horse is good. You go all the way to this corner. Then when you step, you step to here, and then come back in to here, and then drag it. One, two, three, one, two, right? One, one, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, big, loud. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, keep going. Pause and close. Yeah, we don't, we just close here. Yeah. So, so the footwork for, you know, after we turn here, make sure you, your stance is correct so when you do this, you pick and you adjust and you allow that it's opposite side. So if your footwork's off, it's going to go off, be off in the corner there. So footwork, the method, the bu fat, all that stuff, all right, all right. So all of that stuff has to be dialed in so that you're, it's very accurate footwork. Now one thing about Hunga is that <clears throat> our footwork direction is very precise and in fact every style is like that. When we do our Tai Chi form, when you do it, you go outside, you're in the square we practice, you go outside, you do it in a, in a, in a circle like we do it out in the back there. We're in this arc space but you know we still are able to kind of uh, work within the space and not lose direction because of our feet. Our feet are actually steerers. They're like, you know, you're, they're like your tires. You're steering it in a direction. So whichever foot, if you're here, whichever foot you're adjusting, you're really adjusting so that this becomes something that, that's muscle memory into your system. It just knows. Just like this, we know the shoulder width. We pull the heels together and stand. We know that pivot on the balls of the feet, that's shoulder width. When we go like this, it's just, you know, part of our training. We just know that. You know, when we're like this and we step in Yiti Kun, we're doing that. So, and what, you know, we already started developing that day one. The first thing you'd learn was this. But whoever goes back after you learn the first form, that wants to work on that. But then when you get to the iron wire form and you start to pivot in your stances, it's all over the place because it doesn't have any muscle memory as to, you know, how do you get from here to here to here to here and then move in the position because it's, it's already programmed. So that, that you learn in Kung Ji Kun here too. One, two, three, four. You're in your cat stance here. So your foot has to measure that all out. You know, so we have that in our hongas. I don't know if all the other honga people pivot like that. But that's part of the training. In fact, the first year we went to a tournament, one of our guys did Gunji Kun. One of the people judging said, that's a useless move. What's it for? But actually it's for our practice, but it's also for disrupting a stance. But that's you know, something else. So it really helps you pivot and adjust the hip, the hip memory. You know? When you're here, when you're here, that's actually a, a position. When you're here, that's actually a position. But you know, when does it come into play? It comes into play in your transitions. So that's really something that we have to understand more about. You know? Sinking the elbow, relaxing shoulders, and everything. Sink your elbow, relax your shoulder. It's more than this.
all of it. In every, it's in all of the stuff that we're doing. So, so how does it feel to get back? Yeah. <clears throat> very, very slow. Yeah, that was my biggest fear. I said, "Oh, who's going to come back?" Well, a few of the kids have actually kind of um, taken the summer off, and some of them don't know when, because a lot of people are still kind of uncertain. Especially the older people, they're really a little bit uh, worried. The six o'clock class uh, it wasn't too bad. It was you mean today? What, what you know? We had about eight people, I think. Seven, eight people. How many? Yeah, eight. So eight, eight. Oh, the kids? Uh, it was mixed. It was it was it was mixed. Uh, Peter Wayne came. Uh, um, Peter Wayne, he was one. Uh, then the t the two boys I was working one's Calvin, the other one's uh, I I, can't, I don't remember his name. So they they red belts, and then Rose came back and his her mom her mom, uh, Jasmine Iris came in, and I think the the one that's sparring, sparring Max. No, he. Oh that. Oh, none of none of those guys have been back. Yet. Maybe maybe Thursday. I think some people said this week was bad, that because Fourth of July. So oh, some yeah. some people. No. Uh, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So some of them have kids, and they might be not. You know. Most most kids are not in any daycare things or any any camps because they shut down. Camps are shut down. Yeah, Brian Wu came. Yeah, so he was here. Yeah, Brian came. Yeah. So, pardon me. Uh, we do the opening, just the opening, because we got done film. We're filming, so we'll just do the. Yeah. So we just do ten images. We can do the breathing part, just to, just the breathing part, just to, yeah, together, right? Eh? Actually, I'll recognize you, Paul. <laughs> That's Paul. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, we can shake. All right, we'll, we'll do it on Thursday more. All right, deep breathing. Inhale. And it runs on 910. No, on 9, 910. So are you guys, uh, so tomorrow we're streaming in the morning. I, get, I do the 24 movement, and we do a little move down, and then I do. Um, and then Thursday we're going to do the Tai Chi um, you know, class bell streaming. We've been streaming it because there's still people that are not coming. I'll still do the streaming of the Tai Chi class so that 
they're just going to follow. So people that, you know, especially the, some of the, you know, the seniors that aren't coming, will still stream the Tai Chi class so they can follow it as if it's a class. So they'll still get there. Matt. No, um, actually, this streaming is not part of. We, we're live streaming it, but it's a live class. So Monday and Sat, I mean, uh, Tuesday and Saturday mornings is live, but but it's still streamed up because the people that are coming back, I still want them to have the chance to do the class. And then w Thursday is um, Tai Chi in the morning. Yeah, they recorded. It's going out. It went out. It went out. <laughs> But don't worry, they don't know who you are. But the people that are watching, the <laughs> no, it's okay. Actually, there, there's a lot of uh, there's actually a lot of uh, conversations watching. Um, but you know, people people uh, you know enjoy watching, so it's okay. And then um, the uh, Thursday is actually streaming. But this Thursday, I invited the Tai Chi people to do it live. Because I'm going to stream it anyways. But um, Maria, some of Barbarino, some of people are coming up for a live class. Uh, because we're not open Saturday. So I wanted them to still. I didn't want them to come back and then Saturday would close. And so I wanted them to at least get the live class. And then going forward, we might bring a Tai Chi class in the evening back. Because a lot of people that may come back that are working during the day, might want a live class in the evening. So, so we'll see if I can squeeze one of those in on a Thursday night. Uh, no, we don't. You mean outside? Yeah. Uh, no, we just did that as a pre-opening. Oh. Yeah, but it will be Saturdays normally. Yeah. No, oh, here. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Sundays can do it, but the thing is, um, you know, we have three classes scheduled here. The Kung Fu class is two Kung Fu and one Tai Chi. So on on, on, on Saturday. Yeah. Not this Saturday because Fourth of July weekend. So we're, we're closed. Um, the following week, we'll we'll, you know, we can play by ear. We'll see what it is. You know. I, yeah. You know, it, as nice as it is, we need to get people accustomed to coming here because if they don't come in. They're reluctant to, you know, like there's a lot of people that just don't think that w that it's safe. But the people that did come today, they're okay with it. Like that guy with the two kids, he said, we were just debating whether we should start or not. But he came through here, and he says, oh, you know, it's okay. We, you know, we're going to continue. No, it is. Everything's posted. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's on video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were taped all that time. Oh man, all those corrections, dude. <laughs> that was Bill. That was Bill Lee. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> No, actually, if a couple of people that really, like, like Felicity was worried about coming back. So if she came up, like, uh, Maria Barbarino came up this morning, and she said that this is, yeah. Okay. Hey, Lucien. Uh, did we shut down? Okay, we'll line up for uh Okay, Bill. Bill Billy, right? Gordon? Bill Lee. Oh yeah, Gordon Gordon Lou. Gordon Lou. Gordon Lou. All right, Gordon. No. <laughs> Oh, did you bow three times? Okay, bow. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, where's the Pharrell? I shook his hand. See you tomorrow. No? See you tomorrow?